This time of the year in the spring and summer, every year ticks come out. And the most common question we get in the spring and summer, it relates to tick bites and rashes. So it's very important um, to know what to do when you've been bitten by a tick. And the crucial thing is to get the tick off of you. Um, we want to get the tick removed as soon as possible because the longer the tick stays attached, the more likely it is to transmit the Borrelia bacteria that cause Lyme disease. We often get asked what to do after a tick bite. And um, this question is, uh, has really two aspects. One is, should I take antibiotics to prevent Lyme disease after a tick bite? That's called prophylaxis. That's the administration of a single dose of antibiotics at the time you pull a tick off. And that is an option that can be discussed with your physician. That option for prophylaxis with a single dose of antibiotic after a tick bite is different, though, than treating Lyme disease. The question about treating Lyme disease really comes after the tick bite, usually a week or two later, when people may develop either a skin rash at the site of the tick bite or a summer flu-like illness. These are the first signs of acute Lyme disease. The typical rash people have probably heard of is often called the bullseye rash of Lyme disease. And in fact, that is true. Sometimes the rash looks exactly like a bullseye like you would see on the side of a Target department store. I would emphasize, however, that's the minority of Lyme disease rashes. The majority actually look um, uniformly red. They don't have that ring within a ring target appearance. They're just red. They're usually two to three inches or larger. And they're often mistaken for spider bites or even sometimes bruises. Um, but they're um, very distinct. They're very circumscribed. In other words, they're round or oval with a sharp edge. They're not usually very painful. They're mildly itchy. But the key thing is um, they get bigger over time. They usually get bigger than two or three inches. And um, they're um, not spider bites. If a lesion like that in, in the spring or summer in a Lyme endemic area um, is highly suspicious for Lyme disease. And I'll emphasize again, it doesn't have to have that target ring within a ring appearance to be Lyme disease. So you may ask, does everyone get a rash with Lyme disease? The answer is no. Um, some people clearly get symptoms of a flu, uh, summer flu-like illness without the rash, or they may get those symptoms before the rash appears. These symptoms are like the flu, except remember the flu is in the winter and Lyme disease is in the spring and summer. So the flu-like symptoms with Lyme disease are achiness, headache, fever, chills, um, profound fatigue, just like um, an influenza infection in the winter. But what's different is Lyme disease doesn't cause a lot of respiratory symptoms. So you tend not to get runny nose or prominent cough with Lyme disease. It's just that unexplained fever and chills that really has no other obvious source. And that can precede the rash or sometimes it's the only sign of acute Lyme disease. Those are the indications to call your physician. That's early Lyme disease, and that's the most treatable stage when we want to make the diagnosis, we want to get the therapy started. So any kind of round red skin lesion or unexplained fevers uh, in the spring and summer is an indication to give your physician a call and check it out. <music>